Do you guys want to see my audition tape for somebody that's going on 90 Day Fiance? Hi, my name's Chris. I've been dating this girl online for seven years now. Her name's Angelina Jolie, and I guess she's an actor or whatever, but her camera's been busted for about seven years, so we haven't been able to Skype. But like, we chat every day, and we're madly in love. Hey, Nutters, welcome back to the number one YouTube channel in the entire world. And guess what's happening today, guys? As you've seen from the title, we're covering 90 Day Fiance. This time, we're covering someone near and dear to my heart because we're born and raised in the same place, Las Vegas, Nevada, baby. Am I cringe enough for you guys or should I turn it up? Much like myself, we have a lot of famous people come out of Las Vegas, such as Tana Mongoose. But this video isn't about Tana, this is about David from 90 Day Fiance, so let's meet him. How you doing? Hey, good. I'm Kyle. Dave. Dave, good to meet you. I am looking for a motorhome. Okay. My name is David. I'm 60 years old and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Hey, my boy's 60 and he wants a motorhome. Let me know if you guys would ever buy a motorhome. I'm kind of against it because I get car sick, but hey, that's just me. That's a whole lifestyle. That's what we're gonna do here. Wow, that's <laughs> I've done well for myself. Damn, David got money. I'm a little reminiscent seeing his house because all houses in Vegas look like this house. There's only one thing in here that I won't sell. Those are the uh, unicycles that I've had for 40 years. Whoa. Okay, so a couple thoughts on David. He seems like an overall pretty nice guy. Also, he looks amazing for being 60 years old. Like, what the ass? I know his haircut's a little like Timmy Turner's dad, but it works for him. You know, he just seems like a sweet old guy, and I feel like that haircut doesn't look good, but it doesn't look bad. You know, I might want to change it up. I want to take a little bit off the top. I don't know. I don't know if it's a toupee. I don't know. He's an old guy. He looks great for his age. That's all I'm going to say about that. The unicycling, let's talk about the unicycling. Wow. I'm impressed by that. I've always wanted to learn how to unicycle. Since I saw Steve-O unicycle, I was like, dude, I want to unicycle. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was my best Steve-O voice. I don't know. I'm still working on it. I can't wait to start this new life. I'm living in the RV full time, and I want to share that with someone. Mothra, there you are. Mothra, come on, baby. I love my cats, but I definitely want to uh, be married. Uh, the cats don't replace that. And I think I've met that girl that I want to marry and uh, I'm ready for it to happen. So David is a sweet old cat lady and he wants to find somebody to go in an RV with him and live with him in the RV and kind of like van life. I don't know if he's pursuing a van life YouTube career, but those do really well, David. Okay, I see she's online, good. I'm inviting her to chat, hi honey. I think I talked to Lana probably four hours a day. Sometimes it feels great just to get out in the open air and have my chats outside. Pause. Here's my thing with this. With David having this pen pal Lana for this long time and saying she's my girlfriend and all this stuff, he's just chatting with her. He's not seeing her face. He's not video calling her. It could not be her, dude. I feel bad for David, you guys, because people need to be social. Humans need to be social and interact with other humans. I feel like this is the wrong way to go about it, though, especially having a relationship with someone for seven years online that you haven't met. From what I'm seeing and what I'm reading online, they never actually face-to-face -face talked, whether that's like a FaceTime audio or anything like that. They've never had that conversation. It's all been through a sketchy third-party website that charges David money. I don't even think it's a real girl. I think some dude is pretending to be Lana and like took her face and he's just like been chatting with this dude and earning money that way. That's my conspiracy theory because people steal people's images all the time and pretend to be them. That's like very normal. For example, I'm not even a good looking guy. People have stolen my image and like made Tinder profiles of me. I've actually got DMs from people on Instagram saying people have like stolen my look for like Tinder and shit like that. People are doing that to me. You don't think people are doing that to this? You don't think this girl's fake? Like. There's no way, bro. Anyway, sorry about my little rant. Let's keep watching. It feels like she's more a part of my life when, uh, when I get to talk to her in different places. There, there she goes. Hello, dear, she says. Did anyone else read it in that voice? Yes, ready. <laughs> Every time I see that, I know someone's from Eastern Europe, I always read an Eastern European accent. Yes, my love, I'm very excited for a meeting. Yeah, I was chatting with Lana last night and I was asking her the details about the train ticket to meet with me in Odessa. 
but she can't remember where she saved the tickets. Okay, so here's how it always happens on the show. They start talking to this person, hey, what are you gonna be wearing? Oh, I'm gonna be wearing a blue dress. Okay, sick. What about the train details? Yeah, I don't really know of anything about the details. You're talking to somebody in a call center in India, bro. I, you're not talking to somebody that lives in Ukraine. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. How gullible can people be? David seems like the kind of guy to click on those ads. It's like hot girls in your area, <laughs> like a nude photo. He'd be like, yeah, hot girls in my, wow, wow, look at those girls. And I feel extra bad for David because he's from my hometown, dude. Like, can't you go to the strip clubs like a normal person? I'm just kidding. No, but seriously, doesn't he have like any younger nieces or nephews or somebody that can like teach him how to work the computer and teach him about scams? Like, I feel bad that he's like a loner because this whole computer relationship thing is super boomer, my dude. And honestly, it's kind of hard to feel bad for David because when you can use Skype, Facebook, FaceTime, anything to see somebody and have a relationship, you deserve to be catfished if you're this gullible. You know what I mean? Like you can use all those free platforms to talk to somebody, but you're talking through the sketchy site where you can't see somebody's face. I'm sorry, man. You kind of deserve what's happening. And it's even scarier to not figure it out after seven years of talking to somebody. Like, I, I find that strange. You're telling me this dude doesn't have one homie that comes in and is like, dude, this is whack as f What are you doing? I feel so bad about that. David, I'll be your friend, bro. I nominate myself to be your friend. I will help you. I trust Lana. I don't think she would be uh, faking the ticket to me. This next piece of information will really pull on your heartstrings, my dudes. David went as far as to buy his pen pal an engagement ring. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Looking okay, for, I'll be fine. For uh, engagement rings. Engagement rings right over here. Seriously, God help this man. This is crazy. This is the worst catfish story I've ever seen in my entire life. Like you're buying an engagement ring for somebody you've never spoken with and it's not an arranged marriage? Whoa, dude. She is 27 years old. She's beautiful. She's intelligent. And I feel very lucky that she wants to be with me. Guys, I feel like Albert Einstein right now. I just solved the enigma that is David. He is an American version of Borat. Think about it. Remember when he went and kidnapped Pamela Anderson and he was like, I'm in love, Pamela, Pamela. And he's like ripping out her magazine and Playboy and jerking off to it. He's like, I don't love my life, Pamela. This is David. David is the American less funny Borat. Small hands. Small hands, you happen to, hands. do you happen to know her finger size? No, I actually... It's always tricky. Oh, you're telling me, Mr. Jeweler, the finger size is really tricky. I actually got the wrong size for B because B told me her shoe size for her ring size. So I got an eight and a half ring size and the jeweler was like, seems a little big. He showed a picture of B and she's, he's like, I don't think that's it. And I was like, no, no, this is definitely it. She told me that. Um, ring was too big. We had to get it readjusted. Not a big deal, but it is pretty funny that she told me the shoe size for the ring size. Oh, okay. I dated her like online. I've had thousands of hours of chat with her and I've never met her. And there it is. Things just got awkward. Wow. <laughs> Dude, the jeweler is so shook. He's like, this guy's out of his mind. I can't wait to tell all my friends about this lame shit. Yeah. Well, we have lots of different rings here. <laughs> I love this jeweler because this jeweler is me. All right, well, that's weird, but I got to make commission by selling jewelry. So here, if you look at this rock right here, it just immediately goes into sales mode. I'm actually looking for something less than a diamond. Maybe cubic zirconia. Okay, so I was just thinking it might be a smart move for David to not spend a lot of money on this ring. Maybe it's a good thing that he's not getting a real diamond. And then I thought more about it, and I was like, wait, he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars chatting with a stranger on the internet for seven years. Doesn't make much sense. Cheap out on the ring, but spend hundreds of thousands of dollars talking to someone when you could have talked to them on Facebook or another free platform. I've been engaged two times before with American women. Each time the women weren't ready to commit to a marriage. And that was a real disappointment. I have expected to be married, uh, definitely for sure by the, by the age I am now. So, I'm really hoping that this time with Lana, it works out. Okay, pump the brakes there, David. You're saying it like it's the American women's fault, so that's why you're jumping to a woman from Ukraine and jumping to an engagement with? Listen, buddy, you're engaging somebody you've never met before. I'm sure you did go too quick. I don't think this is an American woman versus European woman thing. I think this is a you are too quick on the draw, my guy. So you're telling me that you're gonna propose to somebody that you've never met before, and you think she's gonna be totally into it. 
Um, I don't know how to tell you this, but in Eastern Europe, they're not doing that bad though. You know what I mean? Like, they're not gonna be like, oh my God, my knight in shining armor just proposed to me. They're very independent women here, dude. Definitely showing up and proposing is a weird thing to do here. I did find her address from uh, the cruise registration last year. Guys, it's finally happening. David got an address and right now he's going to confront Lana or the fake Lana. We don't know if Lana's real or fake. We all think she's fake, but we don't know. And now we're gonna find out. He's going there right now to find her. And thinking about driving out there. Seeing if I can confront her. Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, I th I think it's the last thing I can try. Dave, I wish you the best of luck. I really do. Here's the thing, guys. David has caught a lot of heat for this whole Lana situation, but like a Libra, I can see both sides of the argument. On the whole world side, I understand their argument because it's frustrating to see David, see somebody that spent all this money and time and energy and trips to Ukraine. He's flown on trips to Ukraine and Lana stood him up like multiple times. And I get it, it's hard to watch because you want to root for David because it's like, oh man, he seems like a nice guy and everything. But He's so delusional and deluded with this whole Lana situation that it's really hard to root for him. And then on the other side, which is mostly David's side of the argument, he spends so much time and energy and money and it's like, he wants to know. Whether the person he comes face to face with is Lana or someone that impersonated Lana, it doesn't matter. This guy needs closure. I'm honestly torn, you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I don't know if it's appropriate to just show up at someone's door, but at the same time, if you've been honey dipped for like seven years, she could have very well given someone else's address or maybe even the address of the person that she's impersonating. Like, we don't know who it is. We don't know who this person is. I don't wanna sound like a boomer. That's the thing, like I know people have online relationships. When me and B were separate, we were like pen pals kind of like, we had online relationships, but we would like, we would Skype and we would like FaceTime and we would like see each other and everything. And we already knew each other, like we were together before we were doing that stuff. Third party dating sites in David's case, I don't think that counts because you don't know who that person is. You don't even know if that's the same person that's in the profile picture. So I just don't understand how someone could do that. It baffles me. And I think that's why David is such an interesting character for the show because his situation is so weird. So right now he's showing up to her address to her front door, he's gonna knock on it, and he's gonna get the truth. Uh, apparently, it's right on this road right here. Coming up on a bunch of apartment buildings right here. For anybody that's wondering what Bulgaria looks like, it's kind of similar to Ukraine. I feel like all the Slavic countries kind of look similar. And it's cool for me to see David drive and see all the Slavic letters and everything. So I'm trying to read them because I'm learning Bulgarian right now. And most of the Slavic languages, they use the same alphabet. So it's cool for me to see that. And I don't, I don't know, back to the episode. when your simp shows up at your door. <laughs> no, but seriously guys, I'm so nervous right now. I hope she answers. This is scary for me. Next time on- Oh, dude, stop. They did not end it like that. They did not end it on a cliffhanger like that. Oh my God, oh my God. I feel so bad right now, guys. I didn't know it would end like that. I'm sorry that I honey potted you. We're gonna get this thing figured out. If you wanna see what happens, all you have to do is comment below and subscribe to this channel. And guess what? We're gonna be making update videos on the situation. David, we gotta talk, brother. Okay, I gotta give you some advice because we gotta figure some stuff out. Overall, you guys, I think David is actually on the wrong show. I think he should be on Catfish and not 90 Day Fiance because this isn't even a valid relationship. He's never actually met this person. So what I'm thinking is David should go on Catfish and they should get to the bottom of this because the whole world is curious about Lana. The world deserves to know the truth. Nutters, thank you so much for watching this video. Comment below, subscribe. Follow me on Twitch right now.